Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a serum tutorial on ADSRsounds.com. So in this video, we are going to be recreating that really big, gritty, dirty saw that you just heard. It's good for main room, big room, and some other genres of EDM, even uh, potentially hip hop too. So let's look at what this sound sounds like in isolation. All right, so let's look at the sound and we'll solo it. So the only third party processing that I have on it is an instance of the LFO tool mimicking a sidechain compression style effect that's on a bus or an aux end. So outside of that, it's just all coming from Serum. I did layer it with a Melbourne bounce style lead from Serum as well. But if I mute that lead, It's still a very big sound without it. I'm just using this other kind of uh, Melbourne sound to make it a little bit more interesting. The reason why I layered it was because I don't, Serum doesn't give you more than two oscillators essentially. So if I had four oscillators, I would have just created, I would have added these different wavetables to this sound. It's basically the exact same preset, uh, turned off the distortion, messed around with the wavetables, kind of just get, to get a more interesting sound. <laughs> So I have a new instance of Serum pulled up right here. Sounds great. So let's dive into this. I'm going to turn off my uh, sidechain compression here for the bulk of the tutorial. So you guys, if you're trying to recreate this or follow along, it sounds closer to what you're doing. So I'm going to use the sub oscillator as an actual oscillator. I'm not going to detune it or turn the octave down. I'm just trying to get a thicker sound. I'll do that sometimes in Serum because, again, you only get two oscillators. So I'm going to select a triangle wave, and for the level, we're going to just keep it where it is, which should be around 75, 80% by default. All right, no oscillator for this. Let's go to our drop-down menu for our different wavetables, and I'm going to go to analog, which would be the first one on yours if you don't have the uh, virus wavetables there. And then we're going to select saw rounded. And uh, before I go any further, you can download the virus wavetables. Just Google them. They come up. And the, the DAW you see is logic. I get asked that a lot. <laughs> All right, so moving on now. This is too sinusoidal. I want more of like a saw sound. So if you kind of scan through these wavetail positions and we end up at about 15, we get more of a saw type shape and sound, which is nice. So let's turn the unison up and crank it up to 11. Now for the detune amount, I'm going to actually turn this up a pinch to about 0.35. The blend, turn it pretty much all the way out. Keep phase and random where it is. You can turn random in a little if you want. And then the level, I'm going to turn up to about 83%. All right, let's activate oscillator B. And because I already have two kind of just normal sounding waveforms going, um, they don't even really sound like wavetables. They just sound like waveforms. Obviously, the sub is a waveform, and then I got this rounded saw sound. So I'm going to use oscillator B to add some character. So I'm going to go down to the vowels, and I'm going to select Fred likes bass. This is a very nasally sounding wavetable. All right, so let's give it nine voices of unison. Turn the detune up. Turn the blend up. So we got this real kind of melbourne -y actually style, like a Melbourne bounce style lead or even trap, depending on how you have your envelope set. So for the wave table position, we're just going to scan through this until I find one we like. All right, so I like it at 9. And then the level, I'm just going to turn up all the way. So if I bring in oscillator A in the sub. All right, now moving left to right here. Let's activate the filter. I'm going to keep it on the low pass 12, and I'm going to make sure that oscillator B and A are both running into that filter, as well as my sub. So I'm going to select S for sub. All right, so with the cutoff on this, I'm going to turn it down right now. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I know I'm going to modulate the cutoff with an envelope to give it a more proper sound for not only what I played, but this genre. So let's turn the resonance up to taste. I can turn the drive up now just to get some volume back as well as the fat. But that's basically what it's going to sound like right now. And that's fine because we're going to bring it back in with an envelope. 
So speaking of envelopes, let's go to the first envelope because that's the one that's tied to the output of Serum by default. So this shape right here isn't very conducive to main room or big room, unless it's like a really plucky sound, but also what I played. So this might differ depending on what you play with your patch. So what we're gonna do is keep the attack at about 5.5 milliseconds, turn the hold up to about 63 or 70, turn this decay actually up just a shade. I'm gonna turn this stain down. So that sounds better. And then give it a little bit more release. That release is nice for when we when we add the side chain compression effect, it has something to grab and thicken. All right, so let's go to the envelope that we will modulate our cutoff filter with. So again, 0.5 milliseconds for the attack. If you go below that, sometimes you get like pops and clicks inside of Serum. So hold, keep it zero. The decay, we're gonna turn down a little bit to about 730. Sustain around 50, 55%, anywhere in there should do. We're gonna turn the release up quite a bit on this to about 1.2, 1.3 seconds. And now let's modulate our cutoff filter. Let me turn this down. So the sound is starting to take shape. Let's do some things to kind of shape the sound a little bit further and make it cooler. I'm gonna go to my third envelope and make a really weird looking shape. We're gonna turn the decay down to about two point something milliseconds, anywhere in there will do. Turn the attack all the way down. I know I just said don't do that, but for this, it works cool. Our sound's cool. Turn the release down as well. So now we got this shape that you can't even really see, but I'm gonna modulate the coarse pitch of my oscillator here. And if I, I'll turn the decay up so you can hear what this sounds like. It sounds awful right now, right? So if you hold down Shift and Alt, Alt or Option on your keyboard and click, the modulation depth is now positive or negative, not both. So I'm going to pitch this up quite high. And now with the sustain up all the way to show you this effect, it, it sounds terrible, right? But if I turn, if I turn the sustain down and turn the decay up, I get that laser sound. Well, if you turn the decay down to around two to five, maybe four to five milliseconds, you get this nice little clicky attack. It's kind of like a tick to a kick sound right on the attack of the note. It's very high pitch. And with such a short sustained decay and release time, it doesn't affect the rest of the sound. Well, that helps for this type of lead because it helps cut through this bass or this kick. All right, so let's go to the LFOs now because I did do some modulation with the LFO. So we're gonna go to the fourth LFO for, first, and I'm gonna load up a shape that I love using inside of Serum. It's called Slight Movement. And I'll just modulate some things, you know, to kind of make the sound a little bit cooler. So we'll modulate the filter a little bit. I'm gonna modulate the wavetable position in both a positive and a negative depth. So Shift, Option, or Alt, and click. Even modulate the depth of our level on oscillator B. All right, so that sounds a little bit cooler. Um, let's go now to the effects, which are a big part of this this specific sound. So I'm going to turn on hyper and dimension, which are kind of uh, just stereo widening tools that you can use. So I'm going to turn the rate down a little bit, turn the detune down turn the mix down to about 30%. All right, for the size of the dimension, I'm gonna turn down and turn the mix up to about halfway. You can just do this to taste. This isn't super important to the overall quality of the sound. So next step is um, I'm using some distortion and I'm going to use the hard clipper instead of one of the more analog sounding uh, algorithms. We're gonna use hard clip and You 
can hear how that makes it quite big sounding. We're going to add a little bit of pre-EQ. And then turn the mix down to about 50%. All right, now this next step is important to the sound as well. So all the effects inside of Serum, you can, you can kind of move them around and that will determine where they happen in the signal flow. So I'm gonna take the filter and drag it up under the distortion. And I'm gonna use this basically to add another type of distortion. We're gonna go to miscellaneous and then choose the sample and hold. So this will really gritty up the sound depending on our settings. So to start off, I'm gonna turn the mix down to a little bit under 50%. <laughs> Turn the cutoff up all the way so it's brighter. I like having the resonance up as well. And the drive. All right, so we got a lot of distortion going on with this sound. We got the distortion effect with the hard clipper and then the sample and hold filter in the effects rack, which is gonna gritty up the sound all that more. All right, let's add a little bit of compression. By a little bit, I actually mean a lot. I don't know why I said a little bit. Because uh, we are going to put it on multiband, which is going to just slam the sound. So for the threshold, I believe I had it at, um, let's, let's select multiband right now. And for the threshold, we'll do about, I think it's around 21.7 dBs. All right. And then the ratio here, we're going to do about three to one. So turn it down. And the attack, we don't want a lot of attack on this because it's kind of a staccato pass that I'm playing. The release, I'm going to turn down a little bit. And then the gain, this is important. We're gonna put, we're gonna play around with it, but I think it's gonna be around five to 10. All right, so with it on, off, and with multiband off. The multiband just adds, it kind of plays with what you have going on with either the EQ and the filters. It just adds this nice richness to the tone. And you, and you can use it to really squash the life out of it, but with this sound, it works. Right, let's now take the delay and pop that right under the compressor. And for the delay, we are going to link these. We're gonna do eighth notes, so turn them down. And then let's do dotted. All right. All right, so now we got this really weird kind of delay right now. Well, let's turn the feedback down a little bit. We want this to ping pong and add a little bit of this EQ pass on both the high and low frequencies. And that's, I'm, I'm hitting stop so you can hear the, the tail. It's kind of a cool delay. All right, let's get into the reverb. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to share this sound with you. I mentioned this in the beginning of the video. We're going to tempo sync the pre-delay, which you typically have to do outside of a synth. Because a lot of synths don't even give you pre-delay on a reverb like Massive doesn't. Or Silent or some other ones give you a really basic one and they don't give you the option to tempo sync your pre-delay. Well, the reason why you'd want to tempo sync your pre-delay is it makes the actual initial attack of the sound less muddy, and because reverb is a three-dimensional tool, right? So it's, it typically is thought of as it, it can suck things back or push things forward in a mix, depending how it's used or how, how little of it's used. So if you have reverb right on the source sound in the middle, and it's like a stereo lead like this in a drop, it can actually suck it back into the mix. And so it helps to put on the pre-delay kind of like maybe at an eighth note or quarter note delay, pre-delay, so you don't hear any reverb happening right when you're hitting the notes, so it keeps that dead center in, the, in really the focus of the mix. So for the size here, uh, we're gonna keep it at about, I think it should be around 33%. The pre-delay turned down for now. Keep the low cut where it is, keep the damp where it is, high cut, that's up to you. Width, also up to you. Keep the mix pretty much where it is. Let's go to our third LFO, and we're gonna select a side chain side chain shape that is a tongue twister and now we're going to choose side chain or sc7 and so you can see there's no source or of the lfo really allowing through sound right here so if we we're going to go to about an eighth note you could try a quarter note keep it on bpm keep it on anchor and we want it on off so then it just keeps cycling through rhythmically and now we're going to take this and modulate the pre-delay of our sound so if i play my note right now and let's make this a really long time so we'll do a half note Do you hear the reverb come in after I let up? 
Well, that's what that's what we're aiming for. So you play around the pre-delay at the depth of the modulation. And that will be that will kind of depend on what you're playing. All right, finally, let's turn on the equalizer and just boost a little bit of the highs. All right, cool. So we have the effects dialed in, which are a huge part of this sound. Uh, really, the only thing left to do would be to just do some more uh, modulation kind of destinations and, and set up some things. So we're going to go to our FX, and we're going to modulate the drive of our distortion with this really short kind of uh, envelope shape we created. I like how that sounds. And now let's take envelope two, and we are going to modulate the phase of our oscillator A. All right, and finally what we can do here is I'm going to go to a second, or my second LFO, and we are going to add, so we're going to go to our third, we can go to, we can go to the second LFO. I'll do, I'll do a different shape. We're going to select a different sidechain shape. We're going to select uh, number, I think it's three, this one. And we're going to go to our matrix, and we're going to go to uh, the drop down. And the reason you have to do this in the matrix is you can't actually do this inside the drag and drop GUI page. So go to your matrix and we're going to select um, we're going to select LFO2, right? Because that's what we're using. And we're going to then turn this up a little bit. We're going to go to global and amp. This is kind of like a pseudo sidechain compression effect inside of Serum. So for the modulation depth, I'm not going to turn it up all the way. It kind of kills the sound in my in my position, but uh, we are going to turn it up a good amount. So probably to about 40, 35, 40. All right, and the last thing that I want to do to this sound here is we're going to turn on monophonic and turn up the portamento. You can even play around with always. It might be kind of cool for this sound. Uh, where the, where that means it's always going to have the glide or portamento effect regardless of if you have overlapping notes. <laughs> Let's turn down this coarse pitch a little. I like how it sounds. Let's listen to it in context now. All right, so it's a pinch different from the original sound that I used, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, but the idea still applies. Remember, the cool things to take away from this tutorial would be the uh, envelope shapes and, and how it's important to modulate the filter and more specifically the cutoff in the filter. And then also these LFOs where we're creating not only some pseudo sidechain compression inside of Serum, where we did through the mod matrix, but also this shape right here that we can use to create a tempo synced kind of pre delay rhythmic reverb, which really helps for these types of sounds. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.